Okay, here it is. Just a volcano. The tribal council didn't allow us to push, mainly because if it gets dark, there are snakes. First time I went to Kalayan, I was amazed with the landscape and the seascape as well. And then I heard about the other volcanoes we went up to back then. I was thinking of linking them up in a shorter period of time. See if we can test our physical capabilities and if it's logistically possible. I had no expectations going into this trip because I've only seen and heard of Babuyan in textbooks when I was a grade schooler. Heading into this trip, I thought it would be one of those island trips once again where there would be established resource and the people would be more, I guess, warmer because they're used to tourists. Nothing expected me for them to come next. Cette vie, il y a la souffrance et la misère. It has been known that when you go to Babuyan group of islands, there will always be uncertainty. Things change by the last minute, so you have to adapt easily. We got delayed by an hour. Our finally our, our bus hit one of uh, one of the cars in the highway. Uh, Pickup. Apparently, it was. We felt it. We felt it inside. Uh, no one's seriously injured. Thank God. Uh, uh, glad we made it on time. Uh, we were afraid that we were gonna arrive later than the boatman. And. Okay, eight o'clock. Uh, we're supposed to meet the boats at six, six thirty. Still not here. Uh, we're worried that we're not gonna make it to on time and stick to the itinerary. I hope the boatman arrives. Okay, 9 a.m. We're still here. No word from the boatman. No word from the operator. So we're just uh, making a move here, going to the port. Maybe they're there. Maybe uh, they didn't get the instructions right, or maybe they have low bat. We don't know, but it's starting to concern us. Uh, making us worry that we might not be able to pull off our itinerary. Finally we're moving. It's 10 a.m. Way behind schedule so we're doing our best to see if we can pull this off. And it's windy and something I'm a bit concerned about. <laughs> the boat is small, the boat has no roof and <laughs> it's going to be an adventure for Kervin. The original plan to go clockwise starting from Kalayan to Babuyan Claro, then to Kamikin Island, then back to Apari, but ended up doing the opposite, which turned out to be a better plan. But three hours of this. Three hours or more, three hours or more okay. Okay, when we're still smiling, here's the before <laughs> to the moon. So, two of them will be transferring to that boat. Here we are. Traffic 
Going there was probably the most challenging part of the trip. Going counterclockwise means we had to let go of riding a ferry, though we didn't expect it to be riding a small fishing boat. No roof, no life vests. It was a classic tale of a small vessel undertaking the open sea. It was all laughs at first. Getting wet a bit got us giggling, but didn't know it was going to be much worse. I wish I took footages, but it was risky at that point. Waves became bigger. Getting wet was inevitable. Wind were strong. Rain followed. It got dark. We went airborne countless times. Our bag and gadgets were wet. We were left with no choice but to accept what was given. We sat on planks that did not offer any comfort, cramped in a small space freezing ourselves. We peed in our pants and spat salt water endlessly. The first boat ride was really wild. The waters were really rough and choppy. And the worst part was, I didn't know until when it would stop because there was no land in sight. It was just really the vast ocean spanning till eyes can see. And we just didn't know when it could reach the mainland of Kamigin. Seconds seemed like minutes. Minutes felt like hours. Hours felt like forever. After six hours, we finally reached land, cold, hungry, and mentally drained. But this is traveling. Nothing ever goes into plan. It also pays to have a team who has strong will. Okay, uh, we had some clothes get dry, loading the stuff here. Tricycle with Kuya here from Lands Homestay. Chat in a hurry to wash up. Wash up. Oh. Our bag in the corner. Lots of rogue waves roller coaster of emotions it's a combination of i don't give a shit and i'm tired just bullshit back and forth yeah. it's probably the toughest uh, marine expedition we've ever had and it's just day one <laughs> i swear it's true Hey there Delilah, don't you worry about the distance I'm right there if you get lonely Give this song another listen, close your eyes Listen to my voice, it's my disguise I'm by your side Oh, it's what you do to me Oh, it's what you do to me Group of Islands, day one official, made it to coming in. It was a really rough day to start with. I mean, not really rough. Not today, I'm sorry about yesterday. We were beaten, but not broken. We well, almost broken. So here we are. Um, first adventure of the day, the guides didn't show up, so we had to make a move. To uh, gather the, fix our transportation on that spot, and see if it, if it can fit our budget. The early rise for us, 3.30, it's now past 5, and the weather is gloomy and windy. And I hope it's going to be favorable, favorable later. And we were warned by locals that the sea condition from here to the next island so is uh, much worse. But of course, the last year would be the Coast Guard. And let's see if, if it's doable. Uh, with the kind of boat we have, which is smaller than ideal. So 
wish us luck. Thank you, Paul. Onwards we go. And it starts. Okay, this dog is way really too aggressive. I mean, some dogs, they, they just go near you and smell, but this one won't let you pass. Okay. Five more. <laughs> okay. So the rest were picked up by uh, the tricycle going to the trailhead and left because there aren't tricycles. Enough tricycles to accommodate everyone. Tried running, but there's just too many dogs. And they're quite curious dogs. I'm trying to navigate. See? I just passed six dogs gating the the road now there are like five here trying to interrogate me but not as aggressive as the dogs in Cordilleras more dogs more dogs guiding the pig over there pig dogs you can hear from afar okay finally got picked up Guys, we'll and then Clarice and I will run. <laughs> so this is one of those beaches, uh, undeveloped. Anyone can enter anytime. It's like how it is back then, before beaches were gated by rich people <laughs> Look at this Ah, uh, so clean so natural So I'm alone again. Uh, Clarice got picked up. Uh, enjoying this, but I'm gonna be picked up by another motorcycle soon. But I'm enjoying this. It's a solitary moment. Why? Okay, here's the group, uh, start of hike to summit of Kambigian de Babayunas. Those are our guides. Right, let's go team! Our first hike was Kamigen de Babayanes Volcano. It was a relatively short hike as it only takes an hour or so if trails are established. In our case, half of the trail needed to be bushwhacked as it received no visitors during the pandemic. 
my inner for your right. Now we know I got focus on it. Now we know I got focus on it. Got a word? Well, we're not surprised that there are a lot of snakes in this uh, mountain. And last time we saw two pit vipers, but there could be more now since the mountain hasn't been visited in three years. It's pretty basically we're trailblazing the the mountain. So expect that we're gonna wake some wildlife. Hopefully no one gets uh, too close to danger. Quite something when you ask a guide, there are many snakes now and <laughs> it'll give you a pause <laughs> and just heckle. So expect there's a lot. <laughs> Getting dense. Check this out. Look how huge this is. Oh, so dense. Holy crap. So alive though. So how do you find the trail so far, Curbs? Steep, but nice. Nice, huh? It's lush. So dense. We said the trail is lost and then we're making a new one. Well, Kuya is. It's over the pandemic, everything has been dense. See, look. Can't see what you're stepping on. Actually, I'm worried about snakes. Not worried about poison ivies or stinging nettles. But. We are. <laughs> It's a beautiful view we're in the middle it's like a valley of some sorts and now we're headed back down um, bushwhacking our way still a tourney still hasn't arrived but I'm sure you'll make it oh, returning from the crater and it's so dense <laughs> now we get scratched everywhere but the surprise of exploring of a hidden beauty <laughs> oh, ah Everywhere. Ah. Cut plants on your left and right. Yeah. Branch and front. Where's Kuya? So basically, you look for this fresh cuts. Then you'll find them. Find the where the guide plants. Hey, 
Babuyan Island, so we're skipping Didikas because mainly time straight in second. We were advised by the um, by the Coast Guard it's going to be really dangerous because the wind is so strong, uh, might not even be worth it. So anyway, let me introduce you to the... Hi, Chan. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Saw you. The, to our homestay, our lovely home for two days. Uh, it's, it's very intimate, very sweet and we have good neighbors. It's really quiet when you're just the, the sea is just 20 steps away, and that's what it looks like. It's pretty spacious. Uh, so you can see our packing our bags. Here are the rooms. There's the big boys over there. <laughs> Dining room here and kitchen. Yep, Lance homestay. Okay, almost 10 a.m. Oh, three hours, almost. well, two hours. <laughs> Later than we expected, but that's how it is. Not surprised. Loading the boat soon. It said the water is rough, but it's gonna be in favor on the way back. That's why it took them some time to to, to arrive here. So wish us luck. Let me go to the Form, so you won't get hurt just with the rocks
Okay, looks like we're gonna do two volcanoes after all, instead of one, because of the all the changes in the itinerary. Uh, we arrived here at the Bernie Nunez place. Uh, they, basically, the wife is uh, uh, the barangay captain, and they were so hospitable. They gave us food. Uh, food was great. Uh, vegetables and fish, as expected. It's great. Tastes good. Uh, uh, we had a warm welcome. And now, guides are here. We'll be climbing, climbing Mount Babuin in Plato first, and then tomorrow, we'll wake up early, hit the uh, Smith Volcano, go down, then go straight to Kalayan. Sounds like a sound plan. Thanks to Bernie Munoz. The tribal council didn't allow us to push mainly because if it gets dark, there are snakes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna go to the hills and uh, see what's up there. Uh, it's good in a way so we can rest and better prepare for just one push tomorrow. Climbing there, Snake Land. Sketchy the trail is going down. Comment start exploring uh, land of the slitherines. Uh, we're staying here at one house first because it's still too dark to venture to the trail. Even if we have light, is not advisable because of the threat of snakes. Yep, there are a lot of snakes here, and all of them are venomous. Uh, Asian green snake uh, is what's abundant here. <laughs> abundant. So, yeah, here there's a house here, community. See, uh, some traditional houses. And yes, probably 30 minutes and then we head off. Caribbean's excited. It's becoming more dense here. It's become more dense, obviously we have to be slow and more careful because you see this uh, tree? So textured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, the more snakes, the more dense it is because it hasn't been climbed for three years. So we're basically trailblazing the 
route again. You can see Kuya with a machete over there, slicing and dicing our way. Okay, this is what the trail looks like now. We saw frogs, and again, they are frogs. They are predators such as snakes. Oh, look how dense that forest is. Dense it is. <laughs> Something we don't like. <laughs> Basically, dried lava. So it's very fertile. Yeah. Look at the landscape. Oh, it's, it's imposing. Beautiful. Look at those. Look at the vegetation. So that's this. Uh, the street, the channel. Dense, it's mostly uh, pitcher plants, pitcher plants, pitcher plants, pitcher plants everywhere. Smith's volcano. There it is. Smith's. So, attorney, Ron and Walter are on their way out there. craters and the depth of the hole it created as well as the lush forest or at least flora that grew around it really took my breath away. It seemed like to be another world stuck in time as if it was in the prehistoric era. It was just majestic and when you look to the left you can actually see Mount Pocas and it was just something that really stunned me seeing two volcanoes and standing near the crater of one.
Okay, we made it back down 30 minutes. We have to hurry because we need to go to Smith Volcano after. But we have to eat first just to preempt. We don't want to start hungry or become hungry eventually. Because uh, we don't want to be deficit and crash. So this is our lunch spot. Look at that. So unreal. Nice ball. Yep, so portable and easy to pack and eat. Good job. GoPro died of all days. I'm not sure if it's a battery or something else. But yeah, we're doing the flat run now towards Smith. Uh, the other group, uh, they're probably near the top now, so we'll try to catch up. Give or take 5km from here to the foot of Mount uh, Pokis, which is Smith Volcano. Okay, ready Kevs? Ready, let's go. <laughs> Okay, this is it. 40 minutes to get here. And we're about to start, it's 10 a.m. Okay, here we go, we start. It's so hot, it's pretty I mean, height, distance is uh, it's quite short. But the thing is, uh, if you see, look at this. Uh, underneath those thick grass are stones, many of them rocks from the volcano, so you can easily trip. So you can't really go fast. So the problem I foresee here is going down. Uh, you can easily twist your ankle you can't see these rocks so that's a challenge here so the other group Walter and uh, Torney coming down we can go up at the same time they're going down because rocks will be falling so we have to uh, go to alternate, alternate route going under oh, the dead crater we just had our lunch here inside the crater it's now forested lots of vegetation lots of picture plants as well yep just luckily vegetation grew up here it's <coughs> really really hot and we're running out of fluids yep then going down and trying to chase time so we can catch the boat. Endpoint, finally made it here. Woo! 
by the sea from the mountain. And we're just gonna wait for the for child and for the Everyone ended with a high note, everyone happy with the guides, the guides were excellent, uh, loving the people, so far people have been great both in both islands coming in, they, people are laid back, it's so sweet, they're so warm, and then here it's the same, we get the grand treatment, we felt like we were celebrities, uh, the guides were so patient, like they were so, they were so caring, you know, they really took care of us. And you can feel like, you know, the service, the service was gold. And I really recommend one, one hell of an adventure. You know, even coming here is an adventure. Uh, please do go to Babuin Group of Islands. So up next, we're going to Kalayan. We're doing a clutch trip to Kalayan. And hopefully we make it there before uh, dusk. We're going to Sibang Cave now in the hills. Uh, four of us will be running and then half the group will be taking the tricycle going there. You know, pretty much a chill day and we're just gonna, there's no strict itinerary, just hang out, enjoy the beach. A nice way to end our trip. <laughs> just like any adventure to far flung places, you have a fair share of both fortunate and unfortunate experiences. Due to unpredictable weather in the open seas, our trip back to Manila was postponed several times. We were stuck for five more days, but all we need to survive and enjoy are readily available. The premise of getting stranded puts you into a stressful situation, but this is mainly because we all have professional commitments. But maintaining a clear vision of what we have highlights the benefits. We get to indulge ourselves with a slow and simple life. We get to enjoy learning and observing the local refinements, to taste their delicacies, hear their stories, share ideas with them, and of course, to savor the natural beauty of the island, inch by inch. <laughs> a seaman. Yeah, he made everything possible. Like everything. Everything from day one, from from Paris here, all our problems, up and down. He's a problem solver. Iman the man. Yep, Iman the man. for president. Thanks for taking care of everything. Yeah. Standing on the cliff was something unbelievable. It was the first time that I actually witnessed the strength of Mother Nature in my very own eyes. You can see the dark blue waters crash against the stony cliff and you can see how Mother Nature actually molds the surroundings towards it. The trees leaning to the left, the landscape almost bare because of the strong wind. It was just something that I've never witnessed before and it's really something out of this world for me.